We have been married for 16 years now. Yes. She asked me out, not me. That's not that way. Actually, he never says no to me for anything. It's very difficult to find such solid men in the world. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Indian Matchmaker, season three, episode four and five. I felt like four wasn't really giving me much, so I just put the two together. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. Follow me on my other socials and on Discord. We're having some conversations over there on Discord. Would love to hear what you guys think. We meet Ritu. I'm, I think that was correct. She is Sima's daughter, right? And basically she's saying that the scope of, um, maybe landscape is better. The landscape of dating has changed. And now where the pressure, the, the pressure before was to get married by 23, 24. Now 30 seems to be the sweet spot. She was pressured to get married early. Her husband, he, mm -mm, that man don't want to be married. You didn't want to get married. So yeah, when I was 21, I didn't <laughs> want to get married. I didn't want to get married at 26 or so I was shivering. Huh. Above 30, I know so many people now who are not married. And not even looking to get married anytime soon. So there has been some controversy around this whole situation between Sima, her daughter, and her son-in-law. Basically, Sima was on a project before. I think the producer is the same as Indian Matchmaker. And in that documentary, or was it a docu-series? I'm not quite sure. Sima had been talking to her daughter, basically saying, you're not going to amount to anything if you don't get married. So now she is married, and it seems like they're not content in this marriage. When this was filmed back in probably 2016, she was 25 years old and getting very pregnant pressured to get married. I mean, given a choice, I would definitely want to be reborn as a European and get married post 40s or even if I have to. If not, or somebody else. And Fast forward to their appearance in season three, we see that they have a kid together and they're talking about how a lot of his friends in Dubai are over 30 and not married. And even if he had the choice, he still wouldn't be. And she even makes that statement that fact checks with the clip from the documentary. Yes, they do believe in you know, marriage being something that they wanted to engage in, but maybe they felt rushed into it. The husband is definitely envious of his friends who are the same age and who are living the bachelor life he's he clearly wants to be living that life so yeah this is really interesting i think sima has come a long way just off of what i see i don't know her personally but i think she's come a long way in being accepting of the times and how things are changing and stuff but that must be hard as sima's daughter to feel like you're free will was taken from you right but then now you see your mom being a lot more lenient with other people like i would be very very annoyed it's interesting too how she said to her daughter in that docuseries you're not gonna amount to anything but here she is in a marriage that seems unhappy is that better and i don't want to say too much because it's, it's it's basically coming for you know, the culture of dating in India, I know that arranged marriage is a lot more um, prevalent than the love marriages. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's interesting. Vikash is going on a date with Anjali, right? I have some thoughts about Vikash. I'll hold them for a little bit. According to these two, the date went well. She's social and she stays close by. She doesn't know Hindi, so that was a compromise he had to do, but he gets all the other criteria. I think he helped, you know, pull me out of my shell a little more, and so we had a, a fun conversation. So, yeah, it'd be fun to hang out again. I think she's, like, calming. Like, there's something about her that's just, like, I felt comfortable being myself. So, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting the sense that he would rather not be married. I think, I think his pickiness might be a mask for something and if he was to get married it'd be more of a beard situation rather than actually wanting to be 
married. I don't know. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to judge people on how they present. He liked the date. She liked the date. They went on a few more dates. They went on three dates to be specific. After the three dates, he said, mm, yeah, not for me. His reasoning was that because they have about eight year difference, I think she's 31 and he's 39. He doesn't understand why somebody so young would want to be with him and the things that he's looking for. Yes, she matches the criteria, but just the seriousness of marriage, she likely would not match. So he almost feels like, yeah, she doesn't measure up, but then it also is a pity situation because why is somebody so young wanting to date me? I don't know. His reasons <laughs> didn't really make sense, but that's his justification for not moving things along. If that's what you say, then sure. Let's, let's go with that. Priya is now on her third match. Things didn't work out with Bobby. Things didn't work out with the second guy. I don't even remember his name, but Vim... Might be third time's a charm, honestly. He fits everything she's looking for down to the top knot. And if it doesn't work out, honestly, Priya, you're the problem. Vimal is an excellent boy, tall, good looking, Gujarati. And most importantly, he's a very extrovert person and a very creative, just like Priya. <laughs> are you competitive? I think I beat you. You are totally competitive. Slightly, slightly. <laughs> she's funny. And then I think she's got a smile to die for. I'm excited to see where this could possibly go I get I've got I've got a I've got a, a good feeling about this one these two have the same energy they have the same interest there was a lot more banter on this conversation it didn't feel like an interview and it didn't feel overpowering I feel like the second one was like an interview and the first one with Bobby to her was overpowering so this one was a nice balance between the two getting to know each other but still having that energy and lively conversation she later talks to her friends and she says that the reason why Things didn't work with Bobby was definitely aesthetics. He's a small guy, even though she's tall, he, he's taller than her. And also she had formed her opinion on Bobby before she even met him. She knew that Seema had him as a client. So she knew who he was. So when Bobby came through the door, she was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, damn, well, Bobby really didn't stand a chance because he was already written off before she even met him in person. But things with Vim seemed to be good so far i have my thoughts on him we're going to talk about it a little bit later but so far so good rishali has a conversation with her friends majority of her friends are male that's who she connects with most right and so one of those friends she's been close to for 12 years now but it took 10 years for her to be vulnerable with him 10 years wow they all call her out there's about four of them they all call her out on being super picky very particular and is gonna have a hard time dating so Seema actually sets Rochelle up with a life coach and the life coach brought some new revelations to Rochelle that she hadn't thought about or talked about before Sometimes I feel, I think I just don't want to, like, you know, I just don't want to leave my parents. Okay. Okay, thank God I spoke to someone about how I really feel and getting, you know, a review back. Love is not only about giving. Receiving is also a way to love. You know, it's okay to be imperfect. You don't have to be perfect all the time. Yeah. I'll try. She says that when she was young, her mother told her, well, no, her mother told her that when she was young, the environment was very tense and that's why she was sent away at a young age. It was a tumultuous situation. She didn't want her child to be raised in that environment. Problem is she's been separated from her mom for so long that it developed these attachment issues in her adulthood that she cannot really resolve. She also struggles with trusting people. She doesn't want to be disappointed. She doesn't want to be let down. So it's easier to keep people in an arm's length because you can't hurt me if you're not close to me, you know? I wonder if she's ever going to work through it. I don't think it's an issue for her to just be single and live with her parents if that's what she wants to do. If that's her life goal, that's fine. I don't really know if her relationship is something she actually wants because she seems content with the way that her life is going. If she was to get in a relationship, I think she'd be forcing it. But yeah, if she does want a relationship, there's a lot of inner work that needs to be done. I think if she's not in a place to do that, just be single. That's fine too. Maybe it's not fine. Yeah, maybe culturally it's not fine, but like Western world, that's okay. Ashe has been expanding uh, Viral's horizons. 
And her high strung nature is dying down a little bit and she's learning to go with the flow. I'm not a risk taker. Yeah. And now you're in my life and now I'm taking risks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, go with the flow. They're like, oh, she's a, she's a nice girl. She's uh, very like ambitious and driven. Thank you. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 When I started this whole process, I was like, I went on one date a year. And now I'm like, I have the best boyfriend ever. He's the best. He really is the best. You know, Seba might have her first documented success story. Because, honey, it has been three seasons and we have yet to see her match somebody who makes it down the aisle. She says she's the best in Mumbai. Some of you guys were saying she's not the best in India, but she doesn't say she's the best in India. She, sh she says she's the best in Mumbai. Um, it's unfortunate that I don't root for this relationship. I don't. Something about Ashe, I just don't think he's serious. I really, I really, really do not. But Vera likes him and it takes a lot for her to like somebody. So let's, <laughs> let's not ask too many questions. Let's just go with it. Priya goes on another date with Vim. And to me, it's very clear that his infatuation is taking over and I'm not quite sure if there's a genuine interest in who Priya is rather than what Priya would represent in terms of like, oh, I have a hot girl beside me or um, whatever, something along those lines. I find her sexy, so she's cool. She's she's very pretty, um, she's hot. What's your most, what's your ideal partner? Tell me. Um, you can tick every single box. Okay. Someone who's funny, enjoys a good joke, enjoys music. Um, we've talked about food and I think we're pretty much on the same level. He says that in his past relationships, he doesn't, uh, he didn't open up enough. And I'm going to give him grace because they're only on their second date, but I feel like that is a pattern that is happening. When he talks about Priya, it's how beautiful she is, how hot she is and all this stuff. And when he names things that are a little bit more character based, it's so surface level. I love the list, the music that you listen to. I love the foods that you're interested in. I love your favorite color. Like it, it character stuff. I'm not really finding again, grace. It is two dates. I'd be concerned if I was Priya, I would be. But Priya is talking about how he, oh, he's so emotionally intelligent and he wears his heart on his sleeve. He does? I must have missed something. I definitely missed something. Priya says that she's taken aback by how forward Vim is and that I'll give her. He is very forward. He has kind of put her on a pedestal and she feels like it's undeserved. He doesn't know her that well. So now he's reaching out to her, trying to meet up and she's like icing him out. There was even a scene where a tarot card reader was depicting that Priya is the type of person who's very particular and she's not gonna settle for anything that isn't perfect. I'm definitely getting that sense as well. But even still, even though she's very particular, I would be cautious with somebody like Vim. Something is not fully there for me and I mm, mm -mm, I don't I don't think he's the one Sima has another match for uh Vikesh yeah and her name is Namrata now she has the beauty and the energy and the uh culture that Vikesh is looking for but she's too Indian sir What's your favorite color? Uh, all colors, actually, uh, but I think I lean more towards brighter colors. Okay. Well, I'm pretty bright. If you were to have an adjective that started with the first letter of your first name to describe yourself, what okay. would it be? I actually think we do have some similar interests, which is nice, but uh, I felt like it was just an interview and there wasn't all, any like banter. I just was picking up on a little bit of her being very Indian. Ideally, I would like someone who doesn't have an accent. How are you gonna have, oh, Vikash is gonna piss me off now. Vikash is gonna piss me off now. How do you want a woman who has all these things that are tied to being Indian? You want her to be a fluent Hindi speaker, if I'm not mistaken. But now she comes, has all these things that you're saying you're looking for. She's too Indian. He doesn't like the fact that she has an Indian accent. Be for real. Be for real. So maybe I shouldn't even put his sexuality into question. It should be his, um, his belief of himself because it might be self-hate you got a problem with an indian woman having an indian accent as an indian <laughs> that is so weird that is so weird to me now ask somebody who comes from a, a country where we have a very particular accent i'm not gonna lie sometimes it does throw me off a little bit but i'm not gonna write somebody off because they're too zimbabwean unless like the culture um not the culture 
the traditions that he's used to don't align with mine, fine. That's a different conversation. But you're too... <sighs> the cash, just get off my screen, please. I'm over it. So we haven't seen Chatel in a while. She's from season two and she's partnered with... Ooh, what's his name? I want to say Vero, but I don't think that's his name. Let's let's forget his name for now. She was very picky. She was unable to connect with any of Seema's matches. So her sister actually matched her up with one of her friends. They hit it off. Now it's time to meet the parents and the meeting went very well. I've never introduced anyone to my parents. I never felt like anyone that I dated was worthy. For Sheetal, I was looking maybe some somebody like uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh no, God, you're crazy. going here right now? Miami Vice, Miami guy. Miami Vice, I know, that was great. If Sital say next month, I'm ready. If she says tomorrow, <laughs> we got no problem. The parents are not wasting any time. They say, girl, if you want to get married tomorrow, uh, we could do that. We can arrange that in a month. That's okay. We can work that out too. <laughs> You know, they have been through it when it comes to their daughter. But yeah, I was like, okay, it seems like things are going really well. Let's move to the next step, which I thought would be engagement. They're moving in. Okay. I mean, sure. They were doing long distance. So I guess this is the way for them to be together. But I'm like, if you were in a process with Sima, the the impression for me would be that you want to get married. I feel like you're kind of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I think she's dragging it by moving in with this person. I think you should know whether or not you want to get married, considering the fact that they're engulfed in the dating culture of, like, in the Indian dating culture. Western dating culture, I think moving in does make sense, but, like, Indian dating culture, it's like, why aren't they getting married? So, yeah, I'm kind of conflicted. Speaking of picky, we have Priya who is talking to Seema and Dee and she's basically saying like things about this man annoy me and, and Seema's getting annoyed because she's like, okay, you didn't like these other people because they didn't match your aesthetic that you're looking for. Now I found you a person who has the criteria on top of the aesthetic and you have a problem. You're the problem. I have to agree with you, miss ma'am. Priya is the problem. Priya says that there's things about him that she's annoyed by, but she hasn't even given him the opportunity to rectify those things. She doesn't know if these are core things about him or if these are things that he can change. She's just icing him out. And so Seema says, no, go talk to him, explain things. And she actually does. And it goes well. I like you. Yeah. I'll let you know. But at the same time, I understand your point of view. It's like, well, you don't know me that well. So how can you like me? You know, I don't want to shut this down, mm. and I, I know, oh, yeah. I don't want to shut this down, and I, I'd really like us to try and um, maybe see a different side to each other. <laughs> you're so shy. <laughs> this is the shy. thing. You're so shy. I'm like totally fine. Priya, you're the problem, babe. You, <laughs> you are the problem. But <laughs> thankfully, them is saying, listen, we can talk things out. We're mature adults. Don't fear what comes with relationships one of those things is communication you know what i mean so yeah he's just saying let loose allow yourself to lean in it's totally fine i agree she does need to lean in a little bit more should she lean into vim no but it is what it is the episode um well that's what the episode ended with but i'm gonna end this video with us meeting our d yeah She's very career focused and now four months after her father's passing, she was a daddy's girl and he really wanted to see her get married. He is now four months past and she's really taking this husband search seriously. You're going to end up with like all the divorcees. I'm like, that sounds like a great pool. Can I wait for that one? My dad was a jeweler and he said, one day when you're ready and you find someone that's right for you, I'll design your ring. <laughs> he wanted a Cindy guy, okay. right? right. Um, but he didn't have strong preference to anything. I don't think it's going to work out for her mainly because one, she is still very career oriented. And yes, that can work for some people if they're able to have a work life balance. I don't know if she'll be able to. On top of that, it seems like she wants to get married now to appease the wishes of her father. And because he's now passed, I think there's that guilt inside of her saying like, damn, this is something my dad really, really wanted and I couldn't fulfill it. So now that he's gone, I want to really do it. I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned on that aspect. She did impress me on the things that she was looking for criteria wise, because even though she's very stringent in her personal life, when she's looking for a husband, she's 
actually very reasonable. The things on her list is she wants someone who is relaxed because she's a little bit high strung. Someone with a similar upbringing is good natured, comes from a good family. She does also want somebody who's tall and muscular, but she didn't give a lot of physical characteristic stuff. And I think that's good. We'll see with Archie. There, there might be hope. My, my, my concern is the doing it because her dad wanted her to and not because she wants to. But we'll see. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.